Every pain gives a lesson, and every lesson changes a person. Food for Soul and Goa Co-working present today's readings and reflection. November 10th, 2022. Memorial of St. Leo the Great, Pope and Doctor of the Church. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. Beloved, I have experienced much joy and encouragement from your love, because the hearts of the Holy Ones have been refreshed by you, brother. Therefore, although I have the full right in Christ to order you to do what is proper, I rather urge you out of love, being as I am Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus. I urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment, who was once useless to you, but is now useful to both you and me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself, so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do might not be forced but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother, beloved especially to me, but even more so to you, as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. And if he has done you any injustice or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, write this in my own hand. I will pay. May I not tell you that you owe me your very self? Yes, brother, may I profit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm The response is, Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The Lord secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the vine, you are the branches, says the Lord, whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus said in reply, The coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed, and no one will announce, Look, here it is, or there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is among you. Then he said to his disciples, The days will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. There will be those who will say to you, Look, there he is, or Look, here he is. Do not go off, do not run in pursuit. For just as lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer greatly and be rejected by this generation. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection on Today's Readings by Bob God respects us enough to give us free will. 
There are people who want to take away our free will and force us to do as they say. In his letter to Philemon, his friend and follower, St. Paul praises the choices Philemon has made in supporting the spread of the faith. Paul asks Philemon to freely choose to accept back one Zymus as one more act of Philemon's faith in God and friendship with Paul. The psalm is a hymn of praise to God in which God's mighty deeds, particularly to the lowly, are proclaimed. In the Gospel, Jesus cautions against false proclaimers of the end times. He tells his disciples that no human knows for sure when the final days will be. Anyone who announces they know the moment of the parousia, final coming, is trying to control others and take away their free will. Today's first reading comes from Paul's shortest letter in the Bible. It is addressed to Philemon, Paul's friend and co-worker. Part of Paul's purpose in writing the letter is to ask Philemon to take back his runaway slave. One Zemus. One Zemus escaped Philemon's service and sought out Paul in prison. Although one Zymus was not a believer at the time, he must have been moved by Paul's preaching and behavior when Paul and Philemon were working together. Paul welcomes one Zymus into the faith. Paul finds one Zymus true to his name which means useful. Paul sends one Zymus back to Philemon and asks Philemon not to punish one Zymus for his uselessness and desertion but to accept one Zymus as a useful brother. Paul tells Philemon that it would please Paul to keep one Zymus with him in his imprisonment, but he does not want to force Philemon into agreeing to such an arrangement if one Zymus can be useful to Philemon as brother and fellow believer. The psalm declares how God takes care of the outcasts, rejected, and lowly. God freely chooses to love those whom humans consider less important. The Lord's actions show how magnanimous God is. The implication is that believers should express the same love and concern for those who need help by freely choosing to take care of those who have no way of paying back. In the Gospel, Jesus answers not only those who questioned him during his lifetime, but also people who through the ages have asked the question, when will the reign of God happen? Jesus answers the questions in two ways. First, he claims that the reign of God has already begun. It is in the midst of those who listen to Jesus' word. Secondly, the final days of the reign will come at a time when no one knows. Jesus cautions his disciples, both then and now, not to get worked up when they hear that the end is near. Most people who announce the doomsday forecast are trying to control others. Jesus wants his disciples to be prepared by living good lives and not being terrified by predictions of disasters. Disasters will happen, such as when Hurricane Ian struck Florida last month. Jesus even forecasts his own death, and implicitly the death of his disciples. Yet the exact end time is not something to be overly concerned about if one is living a good life. As I ponder the readings, I am reminded of how good God is. God shows love for all people, especially the disenfranchised and the humble, those who are suffering and those who admit their need for God. It makes me think about whether I am humble enough to really benefit from God's blessings. I am coming to the realization that it is not just a matter of physical or financial disabilities, but also a whole mindset issue, which includes spiritual issues. God wants me to acknowledge my need for divine help. That's the first step, the next step is not to worry so much. It is so easy to get caught up in being overly concerned about whether this is the beginning of the end. Some people are forecasting that with the financial failure of banks, and the depressed economy, 
the world tensions in Ukraine and Iran, and the strange weather phenomena, it will be the end of human life as we know it. Others were fearful of the end of the 1999 and also December 21, 2012, the supposed ends of the world. More important than worrying about the end of time, I must be concerned if I am ready to meet my Lord Jesus at the end of my earthly life. That should not be a scary thought. But a motivating attitude. I must look forward with joy to being in the fullness of the reign of God which I should already be experiencing right here and now, that leads to the third step for me, being one Zymus, useful. I must freely choose to be useful to both God and others. I am useful to God if I seek to proclaim that the reign of God is alive and well, right here and now, and I am willing to work for its spread. That leads me to being useful to others. I must be willing to be both a brother and servant to others. Again, this must be something I freely choose to do, not something I feel coerced to do. I am sure that one Zymus was a bit unsure of what was going to happen when he went back to Philemon. Philemon could legally punish him severely for running away. Yet, one Zymus, with Paul's blessings, went back, willing to not only serve his earthly master, Philemon, but also his divine master. That should be my desire also, to serve those whom God has given me to serve and, in doing so, serve my divine master, Jesus. And when I have that attitude of servitude, it is then that God hears my prayer, as God hears the prayer of all the lowly and humble. Praise be the Lord, Alleluia. The personal question or action for today. Am I useful as I live out my life as a disciple of the Lord Jesus? Do I see my responsibilities to other people as a required duty or as a freely chosen way of being useful as I serve others? To what particular service, ministry, do I sense that I have been, or am being, called? How do I feel about my being sent to serve others? Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, loving Master and Lord. Through your goodness, you call us to be a part of your reign, beginning now here on earth and ending in the glory of heaven. You promise that you will be with us at all times, especially as we turn to you and seek your reign over us. Your message of a final day is not meant to worry us, but to motivate us to join the movement of your coming reign. We have often let others discourage us and cause us to lose heart as they proclaim a message of doom and disaster. You have honestly told us that life here and now is difficult and challenging as we journey toward the fullness of your reign. Yet, you constantly reassure us of your assistance, if we but turn to you. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, and following the example of your Son, Jesus, guide us and make us useful servants who seek to aid our sisters and brothers as they journey to you also. And may we always give you all the glory, praise, and honor as we do your will. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, your Son and our brother, our Master Teacher, who has given us an example of loving service, and who is living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen. Presented by Father Frankie Fernandez OFM Capuchin Justice Peace Integrity Creation JPIC Capuchin Goa